Okay, so now the third major category of primary headaches is what we call trigeminal autonomic cephalalgias. And the most common example of that is cluster headaches. What is special about this family of headache disorders is that they all have autonomic features. So what does that mean? These headaches are usually centered on one eye and they involve runny nose, watery eye, red eye, droopy eyelid. So these are what we call autonomic features because they are due to a specific part of the nervous system called the autonomic nervous system. Now, the important thing also about these headaches is that they tend to be unilateral. So they only affect one side of the head. Now, it could alternate between the right and the left, but it tends not to be both at the same time. They are usually much shorter in duration. So for cluster headaches, they are only between 15 minutes and three hours in duration. However, the pain associated with them is extremely severe. So it tends to be a very sharp stabbing pain, again, centered on the eye itself and associated with those autonomic symptoms. Now, depending on the specific disorder within that umbrella of headache disorders, there's going to be differences. So for example, cluster headaches, which are the probably the better known uh, member of this family, are more common in men. Uh, risk factors for it include smoking and alcohol. So alcohol tends to trigger cluster headaches in addition to the other TACs. And they tend to happen in clusters. So you might have, let's say, a few months uh, where you're waking up with these headaches every single night, but then you might go through months or years where you have no pain, and then it's going to come back. That's why they're called cluster headaches. And just like cluster headaches are more common in men, the other members of this family, such as paroxysmal hemicrania, hemicrania continua, and sunct and suna, which are acronyms, but I'm not going to say the whole name, uh, those are either equally common between men and women or more common in women. Now, how do we treat those? So the treatment for cluster headaches involves a rescue medication like a triptan. So similar to the sumatriptan that we used in migraines before, but in this case, it tends to be more intranasal or subcutaneous for faster delivery, because obviously these are very abrupt and quick onset, very severe headaches. So we don't have time to wait for the oral medication to kick in. Classically, they are treated with oxygen, so like a mask with oxygen therapy, but that's inconvenient for a lot of patients. And these days, we tend to treat them more with, uh, with medications and not oxygen. And for preventative treatment, we tend to use verapamil, which is a calcium channel blocker, as first-line medication for cluster headaches. One procedure that is very effective for cluster headaches is actually occipital nerve blocks, which I have a separate video on because occipital nerve blocks are very useful for all of these primary headache disorders, whether it's migraine or the cervicogenic headaches or the cluster headaches. All right, now the other members of the TAC family are what we call endomethacin responsive headaches. Endomethacin is an NSAID, a very specific type of NSAID that seems to be the only one to work for these kind of headaches. And so we use endomethacin actually as part of the diagnostic criteria for some of these headache disorders.